Some people think that we're not alone in the universe and that right now we're being watched by intelligent beings. Let's face it, as one planet among billions in the universe, it's quite likely there's some truth that we're not alone. The question is, how is intelligent life going to make contact with us? Or maybe they already have. On Earth, we communicate using sound. We talk, we sing, we play musical instruments, or not, as the case may be. Sound is a pressure wave moving through the air. But as space has no air and is a vacuum, sound can't travel through it. It's more likely that if alien life wants to make contact with us, they'll use radio waves, microwaves, or some other part of the electromagnetic spectrum. All these forms of radiation can travel through space. The electromagnetic spectrum has a range of frequencies like sound, starting from high and moving all the way down to low frequencies. At the one end of the spectrum, there's the high frequencies like X-rays, and at the bottom end, low frequencies like radio waves. The electromagnetic spectrum consists of high frequency gamma rays and X-rays at one end. At lower frequencies, there are ultraviolet, visible light and infrared waves. At still lower frequencies, there are microwaves and radio waves. All these waves travel at the speed of light and can be described by their wavelength or frequency. Frequency is measured in hertz. One hertz is one wave per second. Two hertz is two waves per second. Four hertz is four waves per second. A million waves per second is called a megahertz. Wavelength and frequency are related. As the waves get shorter, the frequency increases. If the frequency is doubled, the wavelength is halved. So, if intelligent life forms do exist, are they going to break into your favourite breakfast show on 98.8 MHz FM? That's not going to happen, because those kinds of radio waves are very short waves and occupy the VHF, or very high frequency part of the electromagnetic spectrum, which can't pass through the Earth's atmosphere. Now, if you want to pass through the Earth's atmosphere, you need even shorter waves. I'm talking ultra-short waves and microwaves. Lower frequency radio waves are reflected by charged particles in the upper atmosphere. Higher frequency radio waves, like UHF waves, are not reflected and carry on travelling through space. It's as if there's a window in the Earth's atmosphere through which only certain radio waves can pass. Those with a frequency between 300 megahertz and 3 million megahertz. 300 megahertz has a wavelength of one metre. 3 million megahertz has a wavelength about the thickness of one of my hairs. Is this frequency in use, please? Is this frequency occupied? Goal zero. Echo, Charlie, Papa, that's the voice of the man I'm here to meet today from the SETI League, the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And believe it or not, his HQ is in that house in Stockton on Tees. Hello, Trevor. How are those, Jason? Good Hi. to see you. Now, you're a member of the SETI League. Tell me, what's yes, the SETI League all about? Well, it stands for the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. What exactly are you searching for? And we're searching for uh, radio waves and uh, electromagnetic signals from space. I've got to ask you one question, Trevor. Do you believe in aliens? Well, scientists believe that uh, there are so many other uh, planetary systems like our own that it would be inconceivable that uh, there isn't life elsewhere. And if there is, I bet you're the man to find it. We'll certainly do our best. Are you going to you going to find it with a kit like this? Well, that's where it's going to come from. I'm convinced of that. Can I see this thing? You most certainly can. Well, this is the parabolic dish, yep. and it's shaped as such that uh, all the signals is catched in, in this catchment area, focused up into the feed on, yep. out through this, and because the signal's so weak, because of the vast distances that it's travelling, yep. it would need an amplifier and it's amplified through the signal and out into the radio room. So how far into space is this looking? Well, we're looking between three to four hundred light years with this particular one. The distance light or radio waves travel in a year is called a light year. 
In one light year, radio signals will have traveled 10 million million kilometers. So in 300 light years, they will have traveled 3,000 million million kilometers. Trevor has converted his spare room into a control room for his radio telescope. He's been monitoring the skies for signals from extraterrestrials 24 hours a day for the past three years. Okay, so this is your SETI monitoring station. What exactly are you monitoring? Oh, well, we're monitoring the microwave uh, region, yeah. uh, as you can see here. Yeah. That's what all the numbers are, are ticking in front of us. That's it is. And what, what happens if you receive a signal um, that, that you think could be extraterrestrial? The uh, scanner would stop yeah. at that certain frequency and the signal would appear on the screen. At which point you'd, you'd then sort of jump out of your chair, shout, oh my goodness, run over, and what would the next course of action be? I'd want to take a, a picture of the actual signal and a recording of the sound. I, I guess the big question is, have you ever received anything? Well, I can show you one. So this is an image of what you've actually received? And that was the image of the signal that I received. It was found to be a military satellite. Have there ever been any signals received that couldn't be explained away? Yes, in 1977 there was a signal yeah. which has been unexplained to this day. Could this be the message we've all been waiting for? The ones and twos represent the background radiation which is bombarding the Earth all the time. The higher numbers are not background radiation and have never been explained. Nor has this signal been detected since. Is this a message from an extraterrestrial life form? When the scientist found it, he said to himself, wow, and he wrote wow <laughs> in, the, in the border and it's then become known as the wow signal. Well, thanks very much, Trevor, and be well, sure to let me know if well, you hear anything. Come back. Thanks a lot. Find the fight, it was fun. Trevor, Trevor, come back. Trevor, don't forget about me, mate. Here. Trevor. Charming. <sighs> well, there's nothing on again. But if aliens from some distant planet were to tune in and try and watch our TV pictures, what would they see? Would they see me as I am now? some interference, or maybe a TV show from some distant time. Whatever, it's all to do with how we transmit our television pictures. If you want to know how television is transmitted, this is the place to be, the BT Tower in the centre of London. All television broadcasters use it, be they cable, terrestrial or satellite. And I'm going to talk to a person who knows how it all works on the 29th floor. 29, please. Good grief! Look at this place! This is amazing! You must be Katie. Yeah, How are you doing? How high are we now? We're too 20, high, aren't we? 29 floors. 29 floors! Why do we need to be 29 floors up? Well, we're transmitting using microwaves. Microwaves only go in straight lines. We don't want to be blocked by buildings or hills or anything. Now, let me just get this straight. We're not talking about the microwave in my kitchen, are we? No, microwaves in kitchens use very specific microwave frequency that agitates the water molecules. We've got different frequencies up here. OK, so how does the signal, the television signal from the broadcasters, get to this tower? Well, even before it leaves the broadcast studio, the um, TV picture has been converted into pulses of infrared light. The television picture is made up of pixels. The brightness of each pixel is converted into a sequence of on and off pulses. This digital signal is carried by infrared radiation along optical fibers from the broadcaster to the BT tower. Inside the tower, a special machine converts the infrared pulses to microwaves. These are sent up hollow tubes to the appropriate microwave dish. Technicians in the control room, which is more or less the heart of the tower, will then decide which programs are going to be sent to where. And where are they sent? How do you get them to the rest of the country? Well, dishes like this are used to transmit the signals over to the next repeater stations. So microwaves only travel about 100 kilometres at a time. So if you want to go all the way up to Scotland, say, you've got to bounce the signal bit by bit. Microwaves, like light, only travel in straight lines so their maximum range is only about 100 kilometers because the Earth's curvature gets in the way. To transmit microwaves over long distances across country, repeater stations are used. 
microwaves are received by one dish and retransmitted by another until they reach their target. When it reaches the, the next transmitter, the signal's converted into radio, so it's doing the next step up through the spectrum, and it's transmitted out to your telly, and you get the picture. So just you and all these dishes is all it takes to send all those pictures around the country? Me, all these dishes, and Alistair. Good grief! What are you doing up there? Hi, I'm checking the alignment of the dish. The alignment of the dish, what's that for? Well, we have to make sure dishes uh, shoot line of sight, straight towards each other. Do you suffer from vertigo? Uh, luckily not, no. And what about the fact that all these microwaves flying around, you might get fried? Oh, well, this one's turned off right now. We can't work in front of them because they're turned on. Alistair, thanks. Katie, we've covered the UK with our television mm -hmm. signals, but what about the rest of the world? Ah, to get to the rest of the world, we can't keep on hopping. What we do is send the signal down to Goon Hilly. Goon Hilly is in Cornwall. This map shows the route the signal takes as it's relayed between London and Goon Hilly. Goon Hilly, we've got huge dishes and they transmit the signal off into space. We've got satellites up there that receive it and we direct the beam back, level, back wherever we want it. So you must be a pretty good shot to hit those satellites. You've got to be a good shot, you're going 15,000 kilometres. But even with the best controls we've got, we're still losing 99% of the signal. Wait a second, you're losing 99% of the signal? This is very important. If 99% of the signal is lost, that means there's a very good chance that alien life forms out there somewhere are receiving the rest of it. Imagine that. Aliens watching reruns of I Love Lucy. Bill and Ben, the flowerpot men. The news read by men in black suits and bow ties. If aliens are picking up our TV signals travelling through space, they will receive them in tens of hundreds of years from now because they are light years away. So they will be looking at our history. Aliens or not, the electromagnetic spectrum is ideal for seeing things that the eye can't see. The human eye sees in the visible part of the spectrum. Special cameras and scanners see in other parts of the spectrum. For years we've used x-rays to look into the human body, but now the biggest x-ray machine in the world is being used to catch smugglers. Customs at the border of Hong Kong and China are using one of the world's biggest X-ray machines to help them find illegal contraband smuggled in trucks. Trucks arriving at the border are driven onto a platform which carries the lorry through the X-ray chamber by remote control. Nobody is allowed inside the chamber while the lorry is being X-rayed because exposure to very high energy X-rays would be very dangerous. X-rays can damage body cells and might lead to cancer. As the truck moves along the chamber, it passes an X-ray machine which is about 50 times more powerful than the type used in hospitals to X-ray broken bones. The X-rays are so energetic that they can penetrate up to 30 centimeters of steel. Low energy hospital X-rays will penetrate soft tissue more easily than high density bone. This shows up as shades of black and white on the X-ray picture. Similarly, high energy X-rays will pass through packaging more easily than very dense materials like the engine case or steel frame. This difference in density allows the X-ray machine to produce black and white or computer enhanced color images. A continuous stream of lorries passes through the X-ray plant night and day on their way into Hong Kong. Not surprisingly, customs have their successes. Not many smugglers yet know that it's possible to X-ray a truck. Like the human eye, TV cameras detect visible light. The less visible light there is, the harder it is to see what's going on. That's where infrared comes in. Infrared can be found just beyond the red part of the visible spectrum. Infrared, like X-rays, can be used in surveillance. I'm at the Metropolitan Police Air Support Unit in Essex, and right now you're looking at me for an infrared camera. It's the latest bit of kit being used by the Met and other police forces to help track down villains in the act. 
The camera is located in this white ball at the front of the helicopter and it's especially useful when trying to catch criminals at night because unlike a normal camera, it doesn't need visible light to see. There's also a conventional camera in there which, when used in conjunction with the spotlight at the back of the helicopter, takes over when the infrared has located the baddies. I think the vehicle drove off whilst the PC was arresting him, MP. Stand by. If you really want to know how this infrared camera works, I've been told the guy to talk to is Greg. How you doing, Greg? Pleased to meet you. Tell me all about this infrared. Well, what we need is something hot to look at first, so if we get hold of Pat here... In you go, Pat. What you're looking at here is a thermal image picture made up of heat images. You can see where the skin is. Yeah. It's, it's quite hot there. And then as we come down the clothing, the image becomes darker. This sequence was filmed in complete darkness using an infrared camera. The hot water in the kettle is radiating infrared. The camera is detecting this radiation and creating a black and white image from the information. The hotter the object, the whiter it appears in the picture. And can you see that in colour as well? well? You can see that in colour as well. Right, then you have a rainbow image and an rainbow image. And you can relate this to hot and cold because if you imagine a, a hot piece of metal glows white and when it's cold it's blue, you have a palace on the bottom here going from blue to white with numeric temperature readouts as well. The camera can only see shades of black and white, but a computer can represent these shades as colours. And in fact, um, this comes in rather useful with uh, fire brigade operations yeah. uh, where you can actually tell fire officers uh, where a building is starting to heat up and uh, which we had in South also months ago. You actually filmed that yourself? Yes we did. So it can see hot objects but what about someone that's running away and trying to hide? We've set up a little experiment here. You see this bush. There's no one there. And there's no one there is there? No. No you wouldn't think there's anyone there anyway because of the, uh, the foliage. So if we flick to TI or thermal imaging. Ah is that someone standing there? Yes that's Pat. There she is look. Cruising the aircraft, cruising the aircraft. Sounds like we've got a call, Jason. Want to join us? Absolutely. Mark oh, Pat. crew was looking for a suspect who had abandoned a stolen car and had run into the woods. The suspect thought that he was safe amongst the trees because he was out of sight. He wasn't counting on the police having an infrared camera. Another successful mission. And the culprit was caught green-handed? <laughs>